Greetings from Christchurch. Today we're looking at geometry for quantum mechanics. Now in the axioms for quantum logic we use what we might call canonical geometry. So let me illustrate that with some very important examples. In two dimensions we can draw a closed polygon with any number of sides. Here we have the pentagon with five sides. These shapes are associated to trees as shown in this example here. Five sides represents the number four and in general n plus one sides represents the number n. In other words here is the way we factorize the number six. Six equals two times three in terms of the primes two and three and we draw that inside a polygon with seven sides. Now try for yourself and check that this works for any number any positive integer number. So now instead of thinking of a prime as a number we start to think of it as something with more mathematical structure like a polygon. Now as well as trees we also have pictures of braids. These are pictures drawn with lines in other words. Braid diagrams get chopped up into strips. Here we have six lines and you see here five different ways of making one crossing with six little pieces of line and we're going to associate that to the number six. Next we need a notion called duality. Now you're all familiar with this. Um, I'll go through what happens in two dimensions. Actually let's start with the three-dimensional tetrahedron which we chop up into two planar pieces. A front pair of triangles and a back pair of triangles. I'll let you draw the trees dual to those triangles. They have three legs and one root. Now a braid picture is dual to a three-dimensional picture in the following way. In three dimensions we want points to be dual to tetrahedra, lines to be dual to triangles, triangles to be dual to lines and tetrahedra to be dual to points. So we're swapping dimensions on the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. Now if you think about that, a tetrahedron becomes a tetrahedron, which means that a tetrahedron is dual to itself. Now we think of the braids as dual pictures to things built out of little triangles in every dimension. And we see that we have no points and no lines because all we're drawing are points and lines. And we think of these lines or strings as faces in the original geometry and the maps which is where funny things happen like braids crossing as three-dimensional objects in the original geometry. Now you're an expert on quantum mechanics because you can draw these pictures and if you learn how they interact with each other and what numbers we can attach to them and so on, you can do quantum mechanics. Back to our little tetrahedron. Now if you've drawn those two trees you should be able to see how they fit together to the dual tetrahedron that is the dual in three dimensions to the point. We're talking about three-dimensional geometry just drawing pictures with strings in three dimensions and this is enough to do actually a lot more than old-fashioned quantum mechanics. Old-fashioned quantum mechanics uses complicated integrals and geometry that you may have done at university and most of it is unnecessary because philosophically the idea that the wave function is operating on some object of reality out there independent of us as the observer, that is a false construct. And to add in more mathematics to understand four dimensions including time, we start drawing pictures of braids in surfaces, still simple, and we can think of our tree vertices as braid crossings sometimes, that's like another duality. And because primes are now trees, 3 times 2 is not equal to 2 times 3. But now you might have guessed that these lines are like the lines in circuit diagrams. Because this really is about computer science more than it is about the classical geometry that we used in physics in the 20th century. Prime numbers now represent prime sets of measurement outcomes for a quantum observable.